Now I'm just going to take you through a brief overview of the software within Blazor 2. Now here on the main tab, we've got a view of the work plane. Right, we can see it's 300 by 500 mil and we can zoom, pan and shift around. We can also save and load documents. Right, documents can be added from a range of programs. We can use Illustrator, Coral Draw, or Photoshop, and we can import these as SVG files. All right. We've also got the comms pane, where we can connect via USB or Wi-Fi connection, Wi-Fi being the ESP here. So we're going to connect using USB. Then we have the control tab. So on the control tab, we can manually move the laser head around and we can set the speed as well so we've got 2,000 millimeters a minute set and we're going to move it by 100 mils to the right on the x-axis 100 mils by the y and you can see it moving here in real time and then we go back to the home on the settings tab we can set the settings for our laser cutter now this is open source software so you can set a range of settings we'll save those there and lastly we've got the about tab for a bit more information on the software all right, so let's start a small project. Now, we're going to grab a, an image from Google. And then we can convert that and bring it into our software. So let's choose a Pepsi logo. So all we need to do is copy the URL. Use png to svg.com. And then paste that URL in our file name. And click open. There we go. So now we've got our logo. Now we want to reduce the amount of colors down to four working colors, and then we'll generate the file. All right, now that we've got our file generated, we can download as SVG. I'll we'll choose a file name, we'll just name it Pepsi. Back to the software, find our SVG, our downloads, and open that. And now we've got it on the work pane. All right, we can also place a square around our logo. So we've brought in our square, highlight it down here in the bottom left, and we're going to use this for our cutting profile. Now just need to size it, yeah, select the square, make it the appropriate size for our logo. There we go, and then we can click and drag and place that over the logo. Perfect. Now if we click and drag the file down here, we get a range of settings that we can use. So we can set the type of cut give it a name, set the laser power, so we'll have it at 100% here, perfect for cutting. Now for cutting we also want multiple passes as well to get the best cut. And a start height as well. Now the start height will be 10 millimeters for the cutting mats, right? and then the size of the cutting material on top, so 3 millimeters for plywood, what we've got here. The cut rate as well. We can set that. We're going to set 300 millimeters per minute. And lastly, we'll have air assist on as well. That'll give us a cleaner cut. Alright, so before you start the process, it can be a good idea to check the elements of your image. And just check for any background noise, especially if you're copying an image from Google. Right, it looks like we might have a layer of noise here. There we go. So we can just click on the X and we can delete that. Right, so there's two ways that we can do this project. One is to do it by color. So we can drag and drop the each, each individual element and set the settings. And that's going to give us a nice effect to show the different colors. The other option is to select the entire project 
and we, then we can filter by color afterwards. All right, so if we filter it by the red, we can choose our line distance here. Is it 0.2? Our laser power setting. We'll change it to 30%. And our cut rate. We'll change that to 1,000 millimeters a minute. And we'll turn off air assist for this part. Viewing all the elements again. We'll select the light blue for the logo. Change it to laser fill path, line distance 0.2 again. And this time we'll change the laser power setting to 40%. It'll give us a different effect from what we selected for the red. Uh, cut rate again will be 1000 millimeters a minute. generate our g-code and there we have it and we've got a visual representation of the laser path and we can view the layers there we go we can even view for each individual element that's our red Alright, so we're going to do something a little bit different this time. So let's load a grayscale image. Marilyn Monroe, because why not? And then we're going to choose our settings. Now this time we're going to do a laser raster. Right, we'll set the laser power on a minimum of 20. And we'll set the maximum to 70. Laser diameter of 0.2. 10 passes. The pass step to point two. So what we're doing essentially is creating a 3D engraving on our material. So there's going to be 10 passes and each time we'll drop by 0.2 of a millimeter. And the start height, we have a 20 millimeter start height. And lastly, you can set your cut rate as well. And we'll set 500 millimeters per minute. All right. Once we've got those settings, we can generate the G-code, ready for the project. Now I just want to introduce you to a pretty cool piece of software. So we've got 123D Make, and you'll need to find version 1.6. Now this software can take an STL file, a 3D file, and turn it into something that you can cut and then piece together piece by piece. Now it'll even give you the numbers and the numbering sequence to be able to put it all together. So you can find it here. Quick Google search, 123D Make. And here's a few examples of the kind of thing you can do. So these have all been laser cut, stacked using 123D Make. So let's open the OK hand. So this is what it looks like as an STL file, a 3D file. But we want to be able to laser cut this and then piece it together. So we can slice it as stacked or interlocked slices. Here's an interlocked version. Change our arrangement. And you can see here everything is even numbered to be able to put it all together. All you have to do is cut it out have the numbers engraved. 